Hi and welcome to my channel. This video is particularly for coders and developers. As coders, we are always in lookout for new tools and technologies to improve the code we write. This video is going to be a game changer for you as I am going to show you how you can use the power of artificial intelligence in your coding. We will be installing a chat GPT tool in your IDE IntelliJ which can help you to improve the code you write. It can also help you to analyze an existing code and get tips and suggestions from ChatGPT directly in the IDE. So let's get started. If you're using it for the first time, you can download it from the official website of IntelliJ. It comes in two variants. It can be downloaded as a community edition where you can use it for free, but with limited features. And you can also buy the license and use it with the advanced features. For this particular video, you'll only need the community edition. So let's just download it. So this is how the IntelliJ IDE looks like. I can show you the version which I am using. So I am using the IntelliJ IDEA 2021 community edition. So to start using the chat GPT in the IDE, just go to files and scroll down to settings. It will open a dialog box and in the settings dialog box, you will find something called as plugins, which will show you marketplace where you can search for all the plugins available for IntelliJ. If I search for chat GPT, I can see all the plugin applications available for IntelliJ related to chat GPT. These are different tools developed by different companies. I use particularly the chat GPT easy code and we are going to use the same for this video. I have already installed it so that's why it shows as installed but you can install it by clicking on the install button. So once it's installed it will show as a sidebar like this. When you click on that sidebar you will see this window getting opened. You can see the different integrations available for chat GPT plugin. There's easy code, there is chat GPT this one is going to be removed by this plugin, so there's no point in using this one. There is Open AI API, which you can use with the use of an API key in the Open AI website. And there's also an online chat GPT. I use the easy code integration because it's enough for the requirements which we have, and it pretty much does all of the stuff which we will require. So to start with, you need to sign up to easy code. So you can click on sign up and create a new account with your email ID and create a new password and just give a role as developer and just sign up. After you sign up, and now you would be able to ask questions directly to easy code from your IDE. So for example, if you are creating a new project and you want to start with a particular file, for example, if you're writing a Java class and I want to print hello world, I can just directly ask it here to write a program in Java to print the world. And you would see that it would just write me that code. And I can just copy it from here and reuse it. And whatever communication you will make with this particular plugin would be recorded here, and you could just Go back to the history and check what you had asked for and then you could reuse that particular code for example it's even being written to your local history so if you go to files and reopen settings and search for chat gpt you would see other different options which are available or different integrations that are available in your site menu and since we are using easy code, you could see the model which is being used in easy code that's GPT 3.5 Turbo. And you can see the storage location of the commands or the prompts which you ask to your easy code or the chat GPT plugin. And it would be stored in a way where you would have a title. Whatever you provide in here would be like the title for that. So by default, it's like question and answer. So whatever you ask as a question, would have a tag with question and whatever chat GPT provides you as an answer would be saved in that file as an answer. So you could always go back to that particular location and 
get all the history of any questions which you had asked or maybe some solutions which were discussed with ChatGPT and you would want to relook on it. So that is useful when you have that in your local. Now let's look at how we can use it in a real project or an existing project and how it can be useful to improve your code or to help you write some better and efficient code when you already are working on a live project. So this is a sample code. This is actually a backend project for a quiz application and it's based on Java and, and being developed on a Spring Boot framework as a microservice. So for someone new to Java or someone new to this project, the plugin ChatGPT might be very useful where you can ask questions directly to ChatGPT without going online and copy pasting your code or searching different sources in Google. You can just open this plugin and you could see that there is a checkbox where you can ask code base. So if I click on that checkbox, you can see that a folder structure opens and here I can see the file tree if I click on this option. And from here, I can select any file. So for example, if I go to SRC main java.com and I open any one of the classes. So here I'm opening the quiz controller.java and I've selected that. And now I'm asking that GPT explain the file selected in code base. And you will see it explains me what that particular file is, that it's a controller class and what all methods it has. It explains each method, gives a brief description of it and gives the references of the file from where it has got that info. Now I can go further and ask me to explain any one of the methods, for example, in what create quiz method does. And it would just give me more information. So I can see that the create quiz method in the controller class is creating a new quiz in the quiz application and it has an annotation of post mapping. So it indicates that it creates an HTTP post request to the slash create quiz endpoint. So it just gives you a brief description of the method and and someone new to Java or someone new to the project can actually deep dive into the project by asking help from artificial intelligence and could also help you to improve the code. You can ask chat GPT, for example, is there any code for improvement in the current code? And it would give me it could be more stuff like error handling, paginations, unit testing, security, validation. So since it's not done maybe in this particular code base, so it's asking or giving us advice to do those in the code base to make it more efficient and be more productive. I could also ask help to write me some code in this particular project so I can ask it to maybe write test cases because developers normally to write test cases so to write test case for the selected file and we'll just write test cases directly and i can just copy and create them and test them so it would make your work so much easier you can also ask it to write some documentation based on the project so can you Create uh, documentation for this project and just give me the entire information of what the project is about. It would give me information of each of the files, of each of the methods, each of the endpoints, how we can run it. So, what all technologies is being used, 
how to deploy it. So basically you don't need to write so much stuff by yourself. You can explore so many things by this. If you don't understand a particular line, if you want to improve a code, if you want to maybe write test cases as you should, so you could do so much of uh, things. It's just based on your creativity and your requirement that you could ask to do for you and it would uh, actually help you to improve the code which you're writing. Artificial intelligence is surely here to stay. So it's only for us as developers to adapt to the new technologies coming our way. So this video was a small example of how you could use that artificial intelligence in your coding as an integrated part of your IDE. It is useful for experimental projects and I would not advise it to directly use it in live projects due to security concerns of exposing your code. But still, it's good to play around and learn new things when you start a project. I hope my video was helpful for you. Please like, share and subscribe if you want more such videos. Thank you for watching.